Coming to you from the all-new Live House in Hollywood, California. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of Pensado's Place. Artists like Halsey, Chance the Rapper, and Skrillex all have benefited from our guest's enormous talent. You're going to meet the brilliant Lido in just a second. But first, Mark, August 17th. A couple of our partners are coming with big things. Warm Audio's releasing new product. We'll fill you in on all that. And Autotune, rolling out an amazing new set of tools for you. We will also get you those details. The easiest way for us to get you those details is for you to like, subscribe, click notify, sign up for our newsletter, hit us on our socials, and all that information will come to you. Lots of good stuff coming down the pipe. But before we get to meeting our guest, Miss Gallagher is going to show you how to use guitar pedals in your mixing. Here's sound advice brought to you by Sweetwater. Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Welcome to Sound Advice. Today I want to talk with you about something that'll add a tremendous amount of creative options to your mixing. And that's using guitar pedals as effects processors while you're mixing. Now the world of guitar processors, guitar effects pedals is vast. There are hundreds and hundreds of different pedals that cover everything from very simple fuzz boxes to the most elaborate delays and crazy wacky effects that you've ever heard. And they all come in this simple format. Now the challenge for us is interfacing that with our Pro Studio gear. You can't run line level into most of these pedals. If you do, you have overload problems. You just won't get a good result doing that. So we need to knock that line level signal that comes out of our audio interface down to an instrument level. Now, there are a couple ways you can do this. First, you may have an audio interface that actually offers an instrument level out. It might be labeled as amp out or reamp out or something like that. An example would be this IK Multimedia Axe I.O. On the front panel here, we have an amp output. This puts out a signal that's basically at guitar level that you could route into a guitar amplifier and use it for reamping applications. But in our case, what we do is use that amplifier out, route it into the input of a guitar pedal, bring the output of the guitar pedal back into the direct or instrument level input, and record things that way. This basically allows you to use your pedals as an insert while you're mixing. Another option would be to use a dedicated reamping box. This accepts a line level signal coming out of your interface, converts it to instrument level, and then you could bring the signal back in, again using an instrument level input or a DI box to feed back into your interface. A really cool solution is this EXTC FX reamper from Radial. Now this takes line level signal input and sends line level signal back out into your interface. So you have your connections to your interface directly there, you don't need a separate direct box or reamp box. But then we have two instrument level loops that we can switch in and out. This allows you to have two different effects chains using pedals that you can use to process your signal. You can utilize those in different ways. It really allows you a lot of creative options for interfacing external guitar equipment into your mixes. As I mentioned, there's a huge palette of guitar pedals available that you can use to process your mixes. A few examples would include the things I have here. An octave fuzz generates an octave as well as adds distortion. Something like this Octavio from MXR would do that for you. For filtering effects, the Bubbletron from Keeley would give you those types of effects. If you're looking for delay effects that go beyond the ordinary, Spirals from Earthquaker devices is one example that will take you there. You might also want to look at something that will take you even further than a single pedal. A multi-effector, like the HX effects from Line 6, gives you hundreds of different effects possibilities. You can combine those together into chains, you have multiple routing options, all kinds of control possibilities. It's a complete effects solution that covers all different categories of effects, all in one box. I really encourage you to explore this world of guitar effects pedals when you're mixing. So many different possibilities there, from very basic effects to really out there effects, as well as effects chains. You can customize, you can tweak, you can configure things exactly the way you want and get some wonderful effects for your mixes. Thanks for joining me for Sweetwater Sound Advice. I'm Mitch Gallagher. We had an absolute blast hanging out with the brilliant Lido. We think you will too. Enjoy. How's it going? Hello, what's up? What's Welcome up? aboard. Uh, now, thank you so much I, for I, having I, me. I got to tell you, as a guy who grew up in the South, in Baptist churches, playing piano and singing, I feel like I'm talking to a soul brother because gospel, <laughs> gospel chords with you are a big part of your DNA, right? It really is. Thank you. I, I, I definitely, um, 
I, I grew up in Norway and um, my dad was obsessed with gospel music. And the year I was born, he started a, um, he started a festival, a gospel festival in the town where I'm from. Really? Um, and the concept was basically he would bring uh, American, American gospel artists to that little town to perform and to also teach um, like um, this like mini mass choir that they would put on every year. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I kind of like, I grew up around that and, and um, those were the musicians that taught me how to play instruments. So it's kind of just, it, it's just a part of the DNA at, at this point, I think. Love it. Love it. Did you, did you, uh, did you learn theory and, or did you just kind of memorize them by just the, the notes and play them like that? In other words, in other words, if I said to you, if you have a, if you're in C and you play a G7, how would that convert? What would take it to convert it to a gospel chord? <laughs> well, I, I definitely am not like super um theoretical i i think i learned music before i was really able to like understand what was going on um so i definitely am much better playing by ear than i am like in terms of the theater theoretical stuff um i know a little bit at this point i went to like uh i went to like a like a what's it called like a music um uh, music um program or academy or something yeah kind of well like the the system is different in norway so i i went to like a music like high school essentially Got it. Got it. um so um so i have like a little bit of theory from that but it's pretty rusty and most of it is in norwegian so please don't challenge me on theory in in english <laughs> please don't ask us to <laughs> talk norwegian <laughs> about the question I, I think the question was uh was not a good one because we're talking about gospel music and gospel chops, and then you're talking about technical science things, and that, that's the antithesis of what gospel's about. There's a website, by the way, called Gospel Chops, where you can learn you can learn different chords and different uh, rhythms and things like that. Um, so I, I gotta I gotta go straight 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 into the Bill Withers stuff. Um, sure, uh, yes. that that just blew me away. How did you come up with some of that stuff? I mean, is it just who you are? Or do you have a theory? I know a lot of people from Scandinavia have like like templates or something that they follow. Um, What's your story? I th I think um, it's probably I think a, a a lot of a lot of my mentality with music and a lot of the reason why I do things the way that I do them is literally because I was. I was raised in a very isolated place and I didn't have a whole lot of people to teach me the rules. Mm -hmm. um, so I think with that comes, you know, uh, a need to develop your own techniques and, and your own ways of doing what you're hearing. Yep. Um, and also kind of a lack of boundaries. Um, like I didn't know that you shouldn't remix Ain't No Sunshine by Bill Withers. I didn't know that that was like a, like a crazy thing to attempt at. So I kind of just went for it. Um, and that was the thing that I think was really intriguing to me about remixes in the first place was this like idea of, well, this, this original idea didn't come to me. This wasn't the thing, but this didn't pop up in my head. But if it had what would I have done differently? Like what, what would have been my way of, of, of expressing this idea if I, if, if it had came to me. Um, and I think, I think that's like my favorite part about remixing. And that was kind of my, my, my thing about the Ain't No Sunshine flip that I did was that I felt when the strings come in on the original, I felt like such like a, that was so powerful to me. But sonically, it doesn't have that much energy it, compared to what I was feeling. So I was like, if I had that idea, I would probably have done it with like way bigger synths to like make it translate. So I think, I, I think that's like my mentality around it. But it was also a very, a very uh, instinctive thing. I, I made the, I made the you know, Sunshine flip probably 
in like a couple of days out of necessity because I had just had a a remix um, that I put up on the internet get taken down um, uh-huh. very immediately. So I was like, oh, I got to follow it up with something. And then I was like, well, I've been thinking about doing this. And then it kind of just came. When those drums come in, I squeal like a little girl. I was like at a concert somewhere. It felt like, and I had my headphones on. And, the, and when the drums come in, I'm, I like, I, I, I literally stood up, I stood up and yelled. It was, it was amazing. I recommend <laughs> to the audience to check that out. Wow, I, I really appreciate that. That means a lot coming from you, obviously. Thank you. You know what's interesting about your style is that I find that you, <clears throat> you know, sometimes a remix is a deconstruction of something. <laughs> um, and, but you find a way to sort of creative reconstruct. And, and, and the process can either be moved forward into something good and other, or it can be retarded and, and, and pushed back into something bad. You find a way to move the process forward. And I think now that you've explained it, I think the, the kind of rebel in you and the, I don't know what the hell a rule is. But <laughs> you all tell me about this later, which is exactly how this show came about, by the way. Oh yeah. 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 It was, it's a complete left turn. I was never supposed to be involved. It was, to deal with a medical thing and 11 years and 500 episodes later in two, 200 countries, here we are. It's, 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 it's like you remixed us. Well, <laughs> 100%, 100%. Well, I think, I think also I, uh, a, a part of what you're saying in terms of the, the reconstructing is that I think very often, especially within remix culture, like you would deconstruct things to make it fit a platform. Yeah. Um, you would like remixing like, traditionally would be like, well, I'm doing this to make it playable in a club or yeah. I'm doing this to be, make it playable on radio. Yeah. Um, and my approach was always exploring, like how far can I take this? Mm-hmm. And, you know, living in the forest in Norway, I didn't really have access to those platforms anyway. So I was just like, how crazy can I go kind of, you know? Love it. Don't ever lose that. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> I'm holding on to it. I don't, I don't, I don't, mean, I don't mean to laugh at living in the forest in Norway, but that sounds like a Whit Walton poem or somebody, somebody, it sounds like, like a Walden's Pond poem is about to, is about to break out on us or something. <laughs> Do you think that that had any impact on you in terms of, um, in terms of, of, of being somewhat isolated and giving you an opportunity kind of like we have now to, to spend more time working in our studios and working at home? Um, hundred percent. You had you had the influence of your father, and then you had your mother. Yeah, absolutely. I, and 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 I think uh, I think you know, like the mentality with remixing that I have is a consequence of that. And I think I try to keep that same mentality with most of my music, kind of like trying to ignore as many of the rules and and as many of the circumstances as possible, and see how far we can go just purely off of the love for the music, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the isolation when definitely helped with that. When you were young and you heard a song, did you hear your version of it in your head, and that that translated later in life to um, to, to remixes? Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, I I still. Uh, and, 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 and I, it still definitely happens where I like, I'll hear a song on the radio and I'll be like, man, I wish they would have done this instead or done this instead. Cause yeah. that's, that's what I feel like I would have done with yeah. that idea. I still, I still feel that from, from time to time. Absolutely. Um, uh, and yeah, yeah. So look, here, here's what I find to be, um, also interesting when, we've been blessed to have successful people like yourself on pretty regularly. And I think it's important for our audience to know that and see if you agree with this, that part of what successful people do is they stay curious. Mm -hmm. They stay hungry. They never think they've gotten there. So you, you know, you won Grammys and big name folks and Halsey and chance and you know, all that stuff. When you're in the studio, are you learning at the same time? Are you processing and, feeding that insatiable hunger talk a hundred percent no a hundred percent i think and and i i i talk to 
like um, I talk to like people that I make music with about this all the time. One of like, one of the most like valuable, like pieces of advice that I think my parents gave to me um, was the idea that like the, one of the most like fundamental like laws in nature is input equals output. Mm-hmm. That's always like with literally everything in life, more or less. Mm-hmm. So I think kind of like treating your input and being aware of your input, almost treating it like a diet in a way and mm-hmm. keeping curious about it and, and, and looking for, looking for knowledge with, within like your input, I think is super, super important. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I learn, I think, I think I understand more and more every day how little I know about music mm-hmm. um, and how much more there is to discover. Um, mm-hmm. and I think, I think the, the day that I stop feeling that way is the day that I stop making cool stuff. hundred percent. You're, you're, you literally as a creative person, not that I need to tell you, but at the, the advantages of being around creative people for a career is that you should be uncomfortable a little bit. You should be nervous a little bit. That's when you're going to do your best. Mm-hmm. You shouldn't pay attention to rules. You should learn from others, step outside your box. All that is what keeps you going. If you're feeling that, you're still going to find something. The moment you don't, switch. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I'm going to go back to the Bill Withers thing for a second. The, the, quirk, or the quirk, I can't say it, the Quirk Orchestra yes. from Norway, brilliant, brilliant musicians, as good players as any place on earth. There was 80 of them, I was about to cuss, but there were about 80 of them. And all 80 of them had big ass earbuds in their ears. <laughs> and they're like, they're like, they got a conductor, and they're playing your score, and you're, you're wailing on the piano. Those weren't no gospel chops right there you were playing. Those were like serious stuff. <laughs> and. and uh, I always have that picture in my mind, these, these, these very proper and classically dressed musicians. With, with, but they didn't have the little earbuds. They had the one with the, with the thing hanging, the white part hanging down. And, and yep. all 80 of them had it. And how, how could you look over the orchestra and, 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 and go, wow, these guys are really, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. <laughs> and, and, but man, they they wailed. You said earlier when we were talking before the show that, that you did an hour and a half worth of music with them, mm-hmm. something like that. Yeah, we basically. And well, did you support I, it? I I had some help with it. Um, a hundred percent. My again, like my my like my theoretical knowledge isn't like super crazy. So like I can read a little bit of music, but um, I'm not like. I'm I'm not capable of writing for an 80 piece orchestra necessarily by myself. Um, so, so I had some help uh, from actually one of the guys in the orchestra to sort of like write it out properly. Um, and uh, but yeah, we put together a bunch of crazy ideas, and and I already had a relationship with the orchestra from earlier music that I had been doing when I was younger, and we were trying to find something to do together for a while and it kind of accumulated in this or I guess like up until up until I started doing remixes I didn't feel like I had something to bring to the orchestra that was completely original and at when um, when we put together that show the kind of idea was to blend electronic music with that orchestra in a slightly different way. It's definitely been done before, but my, my sort of, my, my idea was to have the, the orchestra and the sound of the orchestra be the focus. Um, I feel like very often when people do collaborations with orchestra, it's kind of like the regular music and then a little bit of orchestra on top, so like some strings here and there and like some little details. Mm-hmm. And the idea was how can I strip back as much as possible of my stuff and translate it directly to what the orchestra is doing and have them be the stars of the show really. Um, mm-hmm. So so that's that was the idea. So I took a bunch of demos of mine even at this point i hadn't put out my first record um my first like lido record and um i I gave them a bunch of demos which actually helped me write the songs and finish the songs even but also a bunch of remixes that i had done Mm -hmm. um 
and we we uh, we we turned that into um, something something pretty cool that um, that I felt like was worthy of doing with an orchestra like that. You know? I'll I'll go beyond cool with it, <laughs> and 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 tie Dave's point into what you just said because the orchestra was the focus. They felt really contemporary. It felt like oh, wait, they got like a thing on them. Like it's a, you know, and I hate putting things in boxes, EDM or dance, whatever, but it was just a thing. And then the earbuds hanging out made it even more of a thing. Like they, they were like not only playing cool, but they were looking cool. <laughs> and, and then the contrast was they were being led by, let me use an older analogy, which, which I think you'll respect. You'll respect. Hmm. When I looked at that, I said, oh, this is the next David Foster. A guy who can sit down and lead this incredible 80-piece machine down his paths in his way in complete control. Because as Dave pointed out, your ass on the piano was absolutely rocking that shit. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, I, you know, I barely played a little bit. But you can tell somebody who can play. And you were just in your element, and it made I was like I I'm pissed that I wasn't there, and it was it would have just it's such a good <clears throat> you know maybe when touring comes back, Lido can go out and do do that tour because it would be fire. Oh, I would love to. I don't I did, like it would be like a lot of people to be moving around, but yeah, I, yeah. I've I've definitely had the idea. It'd be it'd be so cool if I could come up with some sort of way of like connecting with different orchestras mm -hmm. and different cities and like writing something that i could like tour and like showcase should, different orchestras we should talk off camera I, let's do that i had a concept that i wanted somebody else to do that took advantage of certain kinds of things that could make that possible interesting let's it, definitely put a pin in that then. Uh, okay. it'd be an honor to to do that um do man um, you see the, i'm okay. sorry dave let me just let me just get this see the fun part for dave and i when we have such artists as yourself who don't play by the rules, right? Like, you know, the current album, you know, this is Lido and focusing on vocals and, and where he wants to go with that. And then, you know, what you did with Halsey was a, a different kind of approach. Mm -hmm. It's, it's this restless thing that music should be about, you know, this, and, and, and it actually is what inspires us on the show. We're having somebody from NASA, on tomorrow, who is an engineer who's doing sound, having to do with getting information up to people and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like we, we yeah. don't just do so. So it's inspiring for guys like yourself to come on the show and inspire us to keep going. Um, what's next in the hopper, man? You must have a whole bunch of that head's busy. It's it's there's definitely a lot of crazy stuff going on up there, um, but I. Um, right now, I'm focused on creating um, more pieces of music and more projects that kind of like go along with the idea of um, this album that I'm about to put out. I'm 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 putting out an album called um, called Peter um, yeah. very soon, um, and the concepts. I whenever I make whenever I make albums, I I like having some sort of story that can help me guide, if not the songwriting, then at least the decision making mm -hmm. um, within the music and, and sort of how I do things. Um, and for this one, I created this little story about a boy who was born in a spaceship where there is no music. Mm. Um, and one day he stumbles across like a pirate radio station by accident and he discovers this one very like context free like pure like um source of music kind of mm -hmm. um and he uh, falls in love with music but doesn't have the tools to really understand what it is about how to do it and whatever um so this album is sort of a, what i imagined that boy to um to make essentially if he was going to try to make music and it's just it's just like a set of guidelines to be able to stay pure and naive in my decision making kind of um and and try to imagine what somebody who doesn't know any better would do and what would think is cool mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. so 
with that right now, I'm, I'm, I'm very focused on um, getting more pieces that support that story that can kind of like function together. So like there's this pirate radio station that I'm making and there is a continuation of the story that I'm making. Um, and, um, uh, and just like exploring this kind of like sci-fi world of this boy. Um, so, so that's kind of like where I've been at creatively for the, for the past few months. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, steady just also experimenting and exploring um i'm moving more and more into like the executive production world um rather than just you know try to like send beats to people um so i i very quickly care about a project i very quickly get invested um, and the, the best fit, the best way that I've found myself to be able to contribute as much as possible to something I care about is kind of like dive in and, and take responsibility for like quality control on as many things as, as I can kind of. Um, so I've been executive producing a few albums, uh, over the past few years and, um, still kind of like, um, trying to do more of that. So starting some some new new collaborations and new projects with that and uh and then you know still just being a fan and making fun stuff there's a there's a equal i hope hope you take this as a compliment then dave you fire um there's equal parts of herb and equal parts of dave in you (laughs) (laughs) definitely take that as a compliment 100 percent. cool 100 percent uh so um when we get through this interview, I think you should call your mother and, and just tell her she's the greatest mother on earth and shower her with gifts and Christmas gifts because you were quoted as saying that you like your mother to come to the studio because she'll give you suggestions and you always do the opposite. Yes. And, then that's not <laughs> <laughs> and, she's still, and she never gets annoyed and she's always cool with it. So I, I, I do appreciate that. Definitely. No, um, no, 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 no. It's your mother, man. It's your mother. <laughs> And so to extend on that, um, you like to, to bring non-musical people into the studio and, 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 and explain to me, I think I know what you're saying, because I mm-hmm. think I've done it, but you're, you're trying to get information that, that, that is more coming from the, the person that could buy the record as opposed to other people making the record. Is that what you're trying to get information about? That's, that's, I said that's, it right, kind of poorly, but... No, no, I see what you mean. I, I think that's definitely a part of it. You know, I think um, one of the, the dangers of, of being a creative for a long time is that you build up a lot of knowledge and you, you, you sort of, um, it's easy to overanalyze stuff. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah. I think, you know, so, so getting someone in that has um, more of like a pure perspective in terms of of what sounds good and what feels good um, versus, you know, what someone has been taught or, um, or sort of like has, has developed a a taste for or understanding for. Um, I very often find it to be less biased in a way when it comes from someone who doesn't know as much about music. But I will also say that some of, some of my favorite creative relationships are with other people than or or are with other types of creatives than musicians yes like one of my one of my favorite people to quote unquote make music with is uh is a choreographer by the name of ian eastwood um Mm -hmm. he's absolutely brilliant in in the dance world um but one of my favorite things to do is to bring him into the studio and watch him physically react yes yes um, and his first impressions and the things that he accents and, and, and even more so um, whenever he doesn't dance to something is like a major like help to me in terms of gaining perspective on how things feel and how things groove um, or if a song is too fast or too slow and things like that. Um, so I think, I think that's definitely something that has been a huge help for me and that I, I, um, I recommend to anyone like creating creative relationships with not only people who do the exact same thing that you do. 
You, you know, I got to tell you something. Oh, it, it, oh. oh go ahead, Dan. <laughs> oh, hum a few bars of what a song would sound like if I came into the studio and twerked. <laughs> Well, that really depends on how good you are at twerking. Um, Don't take any of your cues. Yeah, yeah. Twerking. <laughs> He's not like the choreographer. <laughs> it's kind of a quarter twerk. It can happen. It can happen. And, and you can find it on the AARP website for twerking for seniors. Uh, <laughs> and Incredible! So I'm sure it would be a very interesting piece of music. Interesting sure. is a good way to put it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me make a prediction for your future, so that your team or whomever can can already put some time away. There is cinema of some sort in your future. That there's there's no way that that kind of creativity, that kind of rule breaking that reaction to elements around you to inform you cannot be applied to something visual. And I, I predict something massive just because, because you don't care. <laughs> <laughs> oh that, man. I <laughs> very often feel like I care way too much, but I really well, appreciate it. Well, I think, I think the, the, the beauty of, it's a very interesting point. I think the beauty of people like, Here's where you and I are similar. Like I'm control freak and I just need to make sure it hits a bar mm -hmm. and a standard and this, that, and the other. So that when it's time for me to be creative, I can let go. Right. right. So that I know that the structure is in there that I can just be a, a, a quirk and bounce off the walls. Absolutely. And, right. And, and I think that um, <laughs> I, I, I love the way that you're creative and 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 I think that for our audience, it's really an example of something you should look like because look at because you're not taking, um, you know, you can afford whatever gear you want, but you're utilizing what you need to utilize and not getting lost in anything that you're supposed to do, and mm. you're doing what leader. Does. I I I really appreciate that, and 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 what you're saying about cinema, I've I've. I've always been very curious about it, and it's definitely like a goal of mine to um, to score something at uh, at some point, like properly. I've I've started getting my feet wet with it a little bit. Um, I've scored a few short films over the past few years, and and experimenting with that. And um, I scored I scored a short film um, last yeah last fall, um, and that's probably the most challenging thing that I've done in the past 10 years, I'm imagining. It was extremely difficult because all of a sudden I had to think in a brand new way. All of a sudden it was less is more to a whole new level. Um, and it was uh, quite frustrating at times and, and extremely sensitive because you're not on a grid anymore you know so like the timing of when something happens um needs to be on the grid with the emotions of the film uh which is a much more sensitive timing i found yes. than than you know like the the the, the groove of a, of a beat right. um so it was so challenging but also definitely think that like i spent maybe a month and a half or something like more or less doing it and i think i learned more in that month and a half that i had in like quite a few years so like it was um really difficult and definitely something that i'm like gonna take some serious time to do in the future um but uh but so much fun and uh and definitely Definitely something that I'm like hoping to be able to do like a whole lot more in the future. I got some hookups there for you too. Okay, fantastic. I'll put that on the list as well. Go ahead, Dave. Uh, you, did a, uh, you did a remix of Kanye and Kid Cudi. I can't remember the exact title. It had Ghost in the title. She Loves Ghosts or some, Kids Love Ghosts or something like that. Mm -hmm. Did Mike, I think Mike Dean might have written on that, and, and I know he was part of it. Did either one of them get in touch with you when they heard it? Um, I, I love what you did. I really, really love what you did. 
Thank you. Um, well, yes, I had a, a very, very brief conversation with one of them about it um, at, at some point. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I believe, I believe Mike Dean did reach out to my team about it um, uh, as well. So they, they heard it, but um, I didn't, I didn't pry a whole lot on what they thought about it. I wasn't sure it was kind of, if it was okay or not. I'm <laughs> right there. I've got that bit of a bad lane to go down. But uh, the, the, for me, I felt like um, I felt like you took it, took it in a unique way. I, I love the original. Mike Dean's one of my best friends, but um, um, I was impressed. I really liked what you did. I felt like it extended the life of the original song, so it was only a positive thing. You know, that's what a good remix can do. It can take a song that, that's on the charts or a song that's, that's popular and give it a whole nother six, eight, nine months of, of life. And I felt like 100%. that's what I did. A hundred percent. That's why I always advocate for, um, for remixing as well. Like I think a lot, there's, there's a lot of people in the music industry who don't see the value of it in terms of what you're saying, in terms of extending the life and, 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 and extending the reach of what type of audiences you can hit with with the remix and 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 can bring awareness of not only an artist but a song um, to um, to different audiences and and what I did I've done this twice now I did it with uh, with uh, what what you're talking about is actually me attempting at remixing um, an entire album um, so it's. Uh, I took two Kanye albums, a um, uh, Life of Pablo and uh, uh, Kid Sea Ghost, and I attempted to grab as many of like the isolated ideas that I could find in each of them and put it together to this like mini mashup of 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 all of it in a mm -hmm. way. Um, and uh, um, again, like I was trying to see how can I push the concept of, of remixing um, and, and how can I sort of, what would I have done with all the, these ideas? It might have not became a full album. It might have became like one little crazy song if I had those ideas. Um, but I'm, I'm a huge fan of Mike Dean and uh, a huge fan of Kanye. Um, and uh, and uh, I just found so many raw beautiful ideas in both of those albums that I didn't know what to pick in terms of remixing. So I, I tried to see if I could do it all. Um, right, but you even kept the through line through the titles mm -hmm. and, and made them connect. There, there's a, there's a, there's a commitment to the deconstruction and reconstruction that I, I can see the thought process. Now here's a question. How badass is Chica? Oh, Chica is, the most badass maybe of all time like uh, she's incredible yeah. um, she's uh she can rap she can really rap her ass off mm -hmm. um and and she um she really cares about the craft like she really writes and she really cares um mm -hmm. and that's like the perfect collaborator for me um cuz she's willing to go in on stuff and and that's usually how i prefer to work uh yeah it, it feels yeah. dangerous yeah yeah <laughs> she's incredible we did um we did a project together her her first ep um uh i executive produced it and sort of um helped shape it and 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 uh and made a bunch of the music for it as well Great. um so uh she's fantastic absolutely fantastic now dave is going to tee up batter's box and get that ready for you. Um, and, and before he starts with that, your, your rig, like I, I, what do you work on? What, what, what do you have? What's your DAW? What do you, are you a big plug-in guy? Are you? I'm i uh, I'm a, uh, uh, I'm a Cubase guy, actually. Mm -hmm. Um, I work in Cubase. Um, I started out in Cubase, uh, very early on. Um, it was my first thought and I've just kind of stuck with it. I've always loved it. And um, other than that, I love plugins, um, I guess. Uh, I use a bunch of plugins. Um, what most of my outboard stuff is more like weird synths and stuff. Um, I'm not a very technical 
person, but I like different sounds from different places. So my my setup right now, and I'm, I'm I can kind of see it from here. I have like a bunch of synths. I have a DX7. I have a Prophet. I have a Juno. I have uh, a Pianet. I have a little Mellotron. A um, bunch of different things that kind of just give me inspiration and that you know have a certain feel to them yeah um, and then other than that it's very simple it's it's cubase and and, and and a laptop yeah and off you go yeah absolutely all right so this is going to be probably our most international batter's box ever we've had people mm-hmm. from other countries but not norway i don't do you, do you remember norway dave i don't think so so he no, gets, he gets to cut you out, and, and you won't understand that he's cussed you out, and then <laughs> you'll get a great piece of fish. After <laughs> so, uh, all, right. all right, Dave, batter's box. Don't be gentle, and 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 Lito, knock knock his block off, man. I'll try. Harmonies. Essential. Ooh. Inspiration. Inspiration, um, a job. Tempo, favorite tempo. Ooh, that changes so often. I'm gonna say 150 right now. Ooh, you, you're up there. Mm-hmm. Uh, virtual sets. Um, Omnisphere. Major or minor key? Minor. Everybody, is, I've asked that question 10 times. Everybody says minor. Me too. Um, <laughs> guitars. Um, mysterious. Ooh. I don't know how to play guitar. Drums. <laughs> um, <laughs> drums. I'm sorry, by the way, Mr. <laughs> um, drums. Foundation. Loops. Rarely. Okay, if you could go back in history, go back in time, what's uh, a musical person that's no longer with us that's your favorite of all time from the past? That's a tough one. Jeez. Oh, my goodness. We need some help. Uh, Hendrix, um, Beethoven. Um, I was, was going to say Beethoven. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I then that doesn't count. I win. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was fun. That was good. He, uh, uh, he's got, he's got yeah, he knows, you know, some people. He's, yeah, he's good. He's good. I like his answer. Real good. Well, he, he's thoughtful, but then, but commits with his bat when he swings it. So, uh, but then you threw that real yeah. question at him. That, that's, I'm not even sure that's even fair. I mean, how do you. <laughs> How do, how do you desecrate the dead and say, well, I'm not going to choose this person. I'm going to choose that person. Exactly. I was thinking, well, there's, there's a long <laughs> list. <laughs> I hope none of their heirs are listening. Hey, for, but, me, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, for me, I'd say like, you know, like Ray Vaughn. I'd say like uh, Dwayne Allman. I'd say uh, I, I keep it more in, in, the, in the 1900s, you know, like, oh, but, wow. I, but I didn't say it right. But I, I I'll ask it again right one day soon. <laughs> um, Got to tell you, man, it um, was a fan beforehand. Uh, just the music and, and you know, you knew something was special, but one of the advantages of the show is we get to research and dig in and find more and learn about the human and all that kind of stuff, then actually talk to them. And um, it, it, it's folks like you that make me feel good about where the business is going because it, it's easy, particularly from where we came from to, you know, we're a time, we're in a time where artistry often led back in the day, you know, and, and made a statement and got out in front and so, so forth. And now simply because of the fire hose of music that's available, it's harder for things to get up and be heard, but it takes people who are willing to break the rules to go do that and to challenge it and to, to go for it. And I, I think you are part of the leader of leadership of that movement, man. So don't, don't, if you ever start to get fearful, call me, I'll cuss you out and get you right back in the fight. (laughs) 
That really means the world to me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, no, no you're back. And anyway, I got to share some of those off, off camera ideas for sure. We'll, we'll get yeah. numbers going. Yeah. Dave, why don't you take us home? Okay. Um, I, I was listening, um, I was listening to Ludo and I, I kind of started thinking about his influences. Like I was trying to go, go backwards and see, and where did this idea come from going backwards in time? And, uh, a lot of times this uh, this month, I've heard the sit the uh, the saying "garbage in, garbage out," and so combining those two thoughts together, I started thinking: your influences determine who you are and who you are musically. And so it might be a good idea to have non-garbage influences and have the best influences you can find from different genres, from different from different time periods. And that's what was inspiration. Uh, inspirational about Lido is that he had, in my opinion, he has incredible input into the process so that it's not possible for garbage to come out. So I think what we need to start doing is start start paying attention to what we let come into our mind as influences and heroes and, and that sort of thing and make sure that we're putting in the right amount of uh, quality and, 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 and just just talent and gifts to get out a version of the same thing. I don't know if that made any sense, but we'll see you next time.